Which of these two countries should you opt for as a prospective international student? Is it the United States or Canada? In this video, we are going to compare these two countries in terms of cost of application fees, scholarships, accommodation, cost of living, security, migrating with family as an international student, visa acquisition, the American and Canadian accent, working and making money as a student. And which of these two countries is it easy to have a permanent residency after your study? You would want to stay till the end of this video. This is a very informative one very good opportunity if you have a child here you don't pay tuition until the child is in the university they go to school for free healthcare is for free which of these two countries would you advise somebody to go to comparing us and canada do you have a canadian accent or american accent <laughs> Me, like, even before I went to the US, I was already too known. I was already <laughs> trying to slay and stuff like that. Making money as an international student. Canadians are extremely nice. Overly nice that it makes you so uncomfortable. You are given three years of postgraduate work permit. It's automatic. You can work 24 hours on campus. There's no cap. You can work off campus too. As a student, can you travel with your family? If you are a lazy person like me, you would say US. It's very intense studying in Canada. Like, Thank you for subscribing. My name is Fred and you're welcome to another episode of the Experience Series. Let's get started. Today I'm here with my sister. She has studied in the US. She has experience studying in Ghana and also studying in Canada. So first of all, uh, congratulations on your marriage. Thank you, Fred. Uh, introduce yourself, your name, which university you are at the moment and what you're studying. My name is Aisha Isahaku. I'm currently in Canada, Ontario. Um, I'm at the University of Guelph. It's one of the best universities, I would say, in Ontario. Right. So um, where are you from and what was your previous qualification proud to relocate in? Um, I'm from Ghana. I went. I did my undergraduate studies at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. I studied um, economics there. And then from there, I migrated to the United States for my very first master's degree. And that was in applied economics. So when I graduated for, and that was, you know, at Ohio University. And when I graduated, um, I applied to another university in Canada, which is University of Guelph. And I got admitted and then I immigrated. So um, let, let's start with your experience in Ghana. What, what pushed you to want to study abroad? Well, um, to be honest, I had um, senior course mates from here in USD who had um, moved abroad to study. I don't know if you'll be comfortable with this, but his name is Joshua. Like he, oh, he was my TA a political in, from the political science department. He went to Ohio University and when he got there, he saw that there was very good opportunity for African students at the university. So he sent me the link, gave me the requirements, and then I provided all of those things, and then I applied. Honestly, my mind wasn't really on it until he sent me the information. I applied to only UK schools when I graduated from KNUSD, but then he said that there was really good opportunity at Ohio University, and then I applied, and luckily I got in. So shout out to Joshua. What do you miss home? I miss my family and my friends back home. Sometimes I also miss the African food, like the ease with which you can have access to African food, like on the street, in Bobby at night, fried rice, those check check joints. I do miss those. Yeah. What do you hate about US and Canada? For Canada, I would say winter. The winter is ridiculous. Like the snow is insane. But for the US, there are microaggressions and sometimes they're blatant racism so let's compare um how much were you paying as a student in the u.s in terms of accommodation as compared to now what you're paying in canada um so in the u.s i think with bills included i was paying relatively four hundred dollars a month and it was um, a three-bedroom house i was sharing it with three other Guinean students who would split the rent mm -hmm. so that was with bills included i would say relatively 400 for fifty dollars but in canada here um the very first place i got accommodation at it was a condo building so that one i paid 595 canadian dollars no us dollars 595 canadian dollars bills excluded but internet was included 
so if you add up utilities i'll say roughly 650 dollars yeah right so let's let's make our viewers understand that the um, the us dollar is a bit higher as compared to the canadian dollar yeah one us dollar is to one canadian dollar 70 cents no 30 cents so okay. 130 cents is equivalent to one canadian uh, one us dollar comparing the two which one was more expensive Canada is more expensive than the US in terms of accommodation. Yeah, because right. Canada, they have a very high tax rate. So everything that um, you make a purchase on, they factor that um, the tax rate into it. So in terms of accommodation, Canada is more expensive than the US. Talking about stipends, you had a scholarship in the um, US. You also have a scholarship in Canada. Which one pays better? Canada most definitely. In Canada, I think I got about, I would say, 80% of my um, tuition and feeding covered, of like 80%. And besides that 80%, I came in with a six teaching assistantship and then another scholarship from my department. But when I got in, there were other opportunities that I got. So most unlike the U.S., the professors themselves would send you opportunities that open up in the next semester. They would send you, oh, there's this um, research assistantship in the Office of Postgraduate Studies. You should apply. And you apply and like within a week or two, um, they give it to you. So I would say Canada, in terms of funding, Canada had relatively good funding. And also with the U.S., I think a junk of um, the payments that we made in our tuition at Ohio University mostly was health insurance. Okay. And even with that health insurance, when you go to the hospital, the amount you pay out of pocket was extremely, like, too much. Mm -hmm. But in Canada here, they have one of the best healthcare systems in the world. And then your health insurance is, like, fully embedded in the tuition. So that 80% scholarship you get, health insurance is covered in it as well. So you end up paying just relatively like $2,000 at the end of the semester. And oh. sometimes you can, you can work off campus too. So you kind of work it out and you're able to pay. Where do you think is more safe, you know, comparatively US or Canada? In terms of safety and my personal experience, Canada is more safer than um, the United States. Because in, since I've been in Canada, this is like, I think my second year now in Canada, I have never heard anything about a mass shooting. I mean, there are little thefts here and there are people stealing cars or people robbing grocery stores. But like the, in the US, literally every week there were in the news, you hear Walmart, people had been shot dead. Um, schools, kindergarten, people, high schools, gunmen would walk and shoot people left and right. And also not to even talk about the police brutality that goes on in the U.S. Yeah. It's a completely different story here in Canada. Even though there's relatively um, similar microaggressions, but Canadians try as much as possible sometimes to kind of suppress it. But in the U.S. it's very blatant. I'm still speaking with my sister Aisha, who is currently studying a PhD program at the University of Guelph, and she has also studied in the US. So we're sort of trying to compare her experience in Canada and, you know, in the in the US. So let's talk about um, in terms of the educational system. Uh, mm -hmm. first, you had the opportunity to study in Ghana, Africa. You studied in the US Ohio University, and now you're studying the, in, in, you know, um, Canada. In terms of the two countries, which is Canada and U.S., which one would you say has the best educational system? The right. education system in both U.S. and Canada is very similar. But I would say the U.S., is the pressure is lower relative to Canada. It's very intense studying in Canada. Like, it's extremely intense relative to the U.S. because I think their course material, they are a little bit more aligned with the English Mm -hmm. The UK, like Ghana, the way our educational system is, because um, Canada is relatively still a Commonwealth country, we are still under the Queen. So their educational system is still like the European style. But with the US, they are more relaxed and very flexible. Mm -hmm. Canada is a different story altogether. Even though you have access to your professors and all that, but then in terms of like course load and then coursework, it's much more tougher in Canada as compared to the US. Because the U.S., I would say, is more flexible than Canada. If you are a lazy person like me, you would say U.S. Because okay. it's more flexible. But if you are like school bay or like, yeah, you would say Canada because it's tougher. It's yeah. tougher to study in Canada than in the U.S. We are talking about fees now. How mm -hmm. expensive it is? Um, is it more expensive in terms of fee payment, tuition, 
as compared to the U.S. Relative to my program with um, mm -hmm. economics, so with the U.S., so with the uh, Ohio University, after all is said and done, you've factored in your funding and all of that, you are left with close to $16,000 to pay. But with Canada, after I factored in my teaching assistantship and then my other on-campus job as well, I was left with relatively $2,000 to pay. So if you have really good funding, um, I would say um, Canada is relatively less expensive. But I do know students who came here with zero funding. So if you come here without any sort of funding at the University of Guelph to do a master's degree, relatively yeah. pay like $8,000, $8,000 and change as a master's student. Yeah. yeah. So you, the U.S. is more expensive than Canada. But right. the U.S. has an advantage. So yeah. I think your fees is calculated based on your credits. The mm -hmm. credits that you register for the semester but for canada whether you register for one credit two credits ten credits 100 credits you all pay the same fees oh okay yeah so that also has to be factored in so sometimes in the us if you are taking just one class your tuition is low but in canada whether you are taking one class two classes or four classes as a flat rate you all pay the same thing right um so guys you're still on the tfe youtube channel on this channel we explore scholarship and study abroad opportunities visa interview terms and generally life abroad this is a series we introduced called the experience series where we invite individuals who have been through the study abroad journey to share the experience this is a question a lot of people would want to ask you had an opportunity to get a visa to study in the u.s and also canada which one is easier to get u.s visa or canadian visa um, so the visa application process for both countries is very different because with the U.S., you go for your interview and on the spot you are told, accepted, rejected, then you know your fate and work out. Mm -hmm. While with Canada, there's absolutely no interview process. So all you have to do is turn in your documentation that they have requested, get your biometrics done, and then you play the waiting game. So you just wait. Some people wait for months without hearing anything from them so i would say the process of getting a visa to us is easier than canada because you go in for the interview and on the spot you know your fate but mm. with canada it's not like that you just turn in your documents and you wait they will get back to you in three months in four months in five months or six months you wouldn't be able to tell so you are kind of in like you can't make plans whilst you wait for that visa because you are not really sure when you are really going to get it even though they give like processing times, but then sometimes uh, for the, uh, the pandemic, for instance, it's kind of messes with their schedules and timelines. So yeah. sometimes you can't really tell where you're going to get it. So the U.S. is pretty straightforward, rejected, accepted. But Canada, sometimes it takes a bit of time. As a student, can you travel with your family? Uh, let's compare these two countries to Canada and then the U.S. Is it possible that you can... You can travel, come with your kids or your, your husband, if you have one, to Canada as a student. Yeah, absolutely. With Canada, when you're applying for a visa, you can add your kids, you can add your husband, you can add both your parents. And when they get to Canada, they, they are legally allowed to work. They, yeah. they can be employed, they can make money. With the U.S., even though you can invite your husband to come, but he's not legally allowed to work, so he will be highly dependent on you. But with Canada, whatever relative you are able to bring here, and if the person is at the legal working age, the person is allowed to work and make money for themselves. Awesome. Right. So in the U.S., a student is allowed to work 20 hours on campus, and emphasis is on, 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 on campus. How about Canada? Um, with Canada, a student, if you can manage it, you can work 24 hours on campus. There is no cap on the number of hours you are allowed to work on campus. And as as of last month, if, if you are an international student, initially it was 20 hours. You could work 20 hours off campus, but now there's no limit. You can get a full-time job as a student. You just have to keep up with your grade. So if you are a full-time student, um, as a full-time international students you can work 40 or more hours on campus you can work 40 or more hours off campus you just have to make sure that your grades uh, meets the requirements of the university right let's talk life after school in the u.s um you know um your student visa do not automatically qualify for a permanent residency or anything you have to use other means like maybe h1b uh, marriage a green card lot you other thing how is it like in canada as a student how do you transition into either permanent residency or any other? If your the program you study was more than a year, you are given three years of postgraduate work permit. 
when you graduate it's automatic it's for every everyone so long as your graduate program was more than one year you are given three years of postgraduate work permit and afterwards even before that three uh, year work permit expires you can apply for your permanent residency and there's so many streams you can apply through the um the ontario immigrant nomination program for students in ontario through the master's stream or international student stream you can if you also want you can go through the express entry route um the federal um, skilled workers route you can go through that route as well but then with the us i know that if you are done it's relatively difficult to transition but canada is very it's relatively easy just make sure that don't break any laws whilst you are a student make sure you keep like your grace as per the requirements of the university mm -hmm. and you are good to go so the three years postgraduate work permit is for everyone, irregardless of the course you studied. It just has to be a little above one year. But if your program was exactly one year, you get one year of postgraduate work permits. So All this right. is also a tip. If you are applying to come here, try and get a program that is more than one year as an international student. So you'll be able to qualify for the um, three year postgraduate work permits. Right. Friends, so um, this is no legal advice. Uh, Aisha is purely sharing her experience as a student. We are not legal experts and we're not giving you legal um, advice. So in terms of the U.S., um, when you get um, you, you, you get into the system as a student, um, you are done with your program. You have what we call an OPT, an optional practical training, which you can do for a year if your program is non-STEM and three years if your program is a STEM. So um, moving on, let's talk about what was it that you liked about the U.S. that you missed? Um, so I would say I that sometimes the community you meet when you go, when you travel to a new country, they make a lot of difference about the experience you have there. Luckily yeah. for me, um, at Ohio University, we had a really good and vibrant um, African student community. So immediately when I, go, I, I already knew people before I got there. And also when I got there, the other new people I met, they were very accepting. Um, weekends, we have like these powwows or like get together to hang out or do fun stuff or just drive to Columbus. What I miss most about um, specifically is my little African community over there. Nice. Uh, and with Canada, similarly, when I go here, it's almost like a similar thing. It's like Africans, when we travel abroad, we kind of try to huddle together when we find each other. Mm -hmm. And some of my friends from um, Ohio University, thankfully, also got admission to University of Guelph. So I kind of still have a little bit of that community from Ohio University in Guelph here. So yeah. that kind of made things very easy for me to transition. Let's talk about transportation as a student in these two countries. Um, what was the main means of transportation? How expensive or easy it was um, as a student in you know the US as compared to Canada? Um, so with Canada here, we have the bus pass system. Um, so the um, city of Guelph, they have like this public transport. Mm -hmm. So if I invest in of Guelph, I think it's embedded in your tuition. So when you enter the bus, you just show them your ID and you get on. You don't pay anything. Right. And it was practically similar at Ohio University as well. Mm -hmm. um, they also have these buses as a student. You go and you don't have to pay. You just show your student's ID. And at night, you had what we call the late night loop at Ohio University. You just call them, I'm at the library. I'm like, there's literally no difference, I would say. It's relatively the same thing. A lot of people have of the notion that the people of Canada are more friendly and sociable as compared to the U.S. You as a student being in these two countries, what, what is your assertion? Yeah, that is very true. Canadians are extremely nice. Sometimes they, they are like overly nice that it makes you so uncomfortable. Like yeah. if you are a foreigner, they try so hard to make you comfortable. So whether they know you or not, for instance, if you are entering like a store, you are far ahead at the back and somebody is entering the store. He, he or she would hold the door and wait for you to walk all the way to the entrance before like the person enters and also when you enter the bus when every single person is getting down they thank the bus driver that is not something i experienced in in the u.s every single person on the bus before they get down they say thank you to the bus driver before they get down and also um during thanksgiving the families in Guelph, they request for non-Canadians to come and have like a Thanksgiving dinner with them just to have like the Canadian um, Thanksgiving experience. Wow. I would say yeah, Canadians are relatively nice as compared to the U.S. Right. L let's talk about money. It's very important. 
Mm-hmm. Which of these two countries, and I don't know if that's a good way of putting it, um, is is very conducive for making money as an international student? Um, Canada, obviously, I would say, because you are allowed to work. I mean, you can't save anything if you are not allowed to work like a certain number of hours. Because with the US, with the limited, tw- with the 20 hours that you are allowed to work on campus, and maybe you have like 60% funding you end up using all the money that you earn to pay rent or food. Sometimes it's not enough and then you have to get in touch with family to support. But with Canada here, you are allowed to hold multiple jobs on campus and now you can work a full-time job whilst a student off campus. So okay. you are able to pay all your bills and you can save. And if you can send something back home, you can do that as well. But with the US, due to the limited number of hours you are allowed to work, you are not able to make that kind of money. Is it, you know, easily accessible to get African food as well? Uh, oh, yeah, it's very accessible. Um, So back in Athens, uh, Athens is in Ohio, we had to travel all the way to Columbus to be able to get um, African food. That was like, if I'm not mistaken, like an hour drive, so two hours yeah. to and fro. But in Canada here, we have these Himalayan stores. We tend to have very um, a lot of Middle Eastern people in Canada. And our taste buds as Africans is relatively close to theirs. So mm-hmm. some of the things that they have in their shop, their spices and yams and stuff, likely Africans, we consume that as well. And because they have seen um, the large number of international students in the city, they tend to carry a lot of African um, groceries, even though it's not like an African store. But when you walk in, you are able to have access to African groceries. And also, um, we have this place we call an ethnic market. Even though it's owned by, um, should I say, white people, not necessarily African. It's not owned by Africans. But when you walk in there, you are able to get any, except kinky. You are able to get like uh, yams, um, corn dough for banku, um, fufu powder, unkulenu, the palm soup base. You are able to get all of those there going to Columbus. I think those stores relatively was owned by Africans. But here we are able to get groceries from non-African stores. So I would say in terms of access to African groceries, it's easier in Canada than the U.S. based on my experience. Right. So uh, in terms of the normal groceries, how expensive is it? Would you say it's more, much expensive at maybe buying stuff at Walmart? Yeah, um, it's more expensive in Canada than the U.S. It's cheaper. Groceries are more cheaper in the U.S. than in Canada. Canada has a very high tax rate. So the sales tax in Canada is 13%. Great. Guys, I'm still talking to Aisha and she's sharing her experience studying in U.S. and Canada. I'm sure you're making a decision as you continue to enjoy the conversation. So let's talk about, um, you know, the accent. Do you have a Canadian accent or American accent? (laughs) Uh, I honestly don't know because both accents are very similar. But Canadians, like when you go to like the north, they have this peculiar accent. Like they add the word A to everything. It's like E-H. The weather is nice. A, everything. So if you want to differentiate a Canadian from an American, Uh, they end their sentence with A. You know that the person is Canadian. Yeah, they add it to everything they say. Yeah, students at the University of Guelph, A, that's what they always say. And it's always funny to me. So sometimes I say to, to, uh, back to them just for the jokes. <laughs> yeah. So, so would you prefer the, the American accent to the Canadian accent? Honestly, either works for me. I prefer okay. both because they are not very different. Awesome. Obvious, I wanted to talk about weather, but um, I, I wanted to get your thoughts. The weather in Canada as compared to... Have you experienced winter in both countries? Yeah, I have. Yeah. The US, I think the winter wasn't... It wasn't intense. It yeah. was very mild. And I, unfortunately for me, I came to Canada in the middle of winter. And when I came, I came during the pandemic. I had to quarantine for 14 days. Mm-hmm. So whenever I looked outside my window, all I could see was piles and piles of snow. And it was so cold. Like when you step outside, 
and you don't have the right clothing you cannot feel your fingertips or your toes and i'm told ontario is actually the best place to um, experience winter because it's worse in provinces like alberta and then manitoba those kind of areas um so i would say canada is terrible in the winter but it's relatively better in the u.s and that is conditional to where you live because i know in the u.s there are some states they have really terrible winter but ohio we didn't really have like a blizzard or anything like that but canada we are very prone to blizzards during like um the winter and summer um they are similar summer is like your skin is melting off in ohio it was like that it's like the sun is like right here on top of your head canada too is practically the same i think the difference is winter where canada has really bad winter as compared to the u.s coming back to the language a lot of uh, most complaints from international students uh, maybe when they talk professors and their mates uh, especially when they are new in the system are unable to understand them and so that forced them to you know acquire either the canadian accent or the american mm -hmm. accent how was it for you as a fresh uh, student you know um in, in in the u.s was the language a barrier were your professors hearing you were your, your course mates hearing you when you speak um so not all of them and not like every word that i say because sometimes ghana uh, accent is for sure not an american accent so when you go there for the first time like um your uh, pronunciation is kind of new to them so sometimes you have to repeat yourself twice before like they will understand what you are saying but in terms of my professors um if they don't understand you they'll politely ask you to repeat what you said they didn't get that and yeah. some of the students they were not rude or any i've not had experience with my classmates or anyone be rude to me for not being able to understand what i say they'll just say pardon like i didn't get what you said could you repeat that and i repeated myself so yeah i mean eventually you assimilate because you can't mm -hmm. always be repeating yourself all the time so you have to assimilate to the like the way that they speak so like right. we call that code switching so in your presence you speak some way but when you are amongst your fellow africans you switch back to your regular accent so you could switch as in like depending on the environment you find yourself in so let me put you on the spot so um if you're introducing yourself you're mentioning your name you're from ghana and which um you know program you're pursuing at the moment how would you put it in american language let's go to the local language too as well Let's start, let's start with American accent. I'm so going to say my name is Aisha Istahaku. Um, I'm a Ghanaian studying economics at the University of Guelph. This is and pure not to the Ghanaian accent. <laughs> <laughs> and if I'm going to say it to a fellow Ghanaian, yeah. unless I'm speaking Chi, I'll still say yeah. it the same way. Me, like, even if I went to the US, I was already too known. I was already <laughs> trying to slur and stuff like that. So it was very easy for me to copy how they spoke. Yeah. So I think I also say the same way to Egenian. There might be this young girl who is watching you somewhere in Africa, or watching you from KNUS, probably studying the same program you studied at KNUS. And you have an, had an opportunity to study in these two countries that a lot of young ladies like yourself would aim to study at. What would be your worst to them? Um. So my advice to them is, don't let anybody discourage you you'll get a lot of no's in the application process but do not be discouraged just keep applying i applied to over i would say 30 schools before ohio university actually gave me the chance just keep applying sometimes you get admission you don't get funding um but don't give up just keep applying whatever scholarship you see being advertised apply for it even if you know you don't stand a chance just apply for it you never know um chances is that um you might get picked um one of these days so don't give up just keep applying to any school any scholarship you hear about even if you think you don't qualify just put in their application um they might surprise you and you actually might surprise yourself i'm sure there are people you might want to say thank you to god bless you to whatever so at the people who helped you on your way all the way you mentioned um, um joshua's name shout out to joshua if he's watching and other people you want to say thank you to yeah so number one like you said um joshua who suggested um ohio university to me thank you thank you thank you because i don't think without that um opportunity and that nudge i would have even thought about applying to that school so thank you joshua and also my parents oh my goodness you guys you guys are the best you rock and to my husband i love you you are my friends and family it's been a great one 
I've been talking to Aisha, who is currently in Canada. She's pursuing a PhD in financial economics in Canada. She studied in the U.S. and later moved to Canada, and she's originally from Ghana. And she shared her experience in these two countries with us. So uh, if you had to conclude, um, which of these two countries would you advise somebody to go to? Um, so if you have a family-oriented person, you need a calm and cool country to raise your family and your kids and you want to also bring your grandparents drag all your siblings and your entire family from africa canada is the best place to come but then if you're a young person looking to hustle just moving you don't want to slow down i would say the us they have a very low tax rate when you work all your money comes to you but canada is more socially inclined um so they tend to have a higher tax rate but their yeah, social systems are perfect. If you have a child here, you don't pay tuition until the child is in the university. They go to school for free. Healthcare is for free. For me, Canada, I would advise my friends in Ghana to like emigrate to Canada. But if you're a young person, single, you don't have children, you don't have a family, you just want to hustle. I always say the U.S. is the best place. So thank you for making time to join us, Aisha. Um, it's been a great conversation, and I'm hoping that a lot of people watching us now are going to take um you know um, a lot of advice from this video please don't forget to click on the subscribe button hit on the notification bell so that anytime i upload a new video you'll be the first to be notified my name is fred and this has been another episode of the experience series i'll see you in another video